All right, last time we almost finished our notes on this, we went through our consumer types and we learned a little bit about how each of these consumer types works in the environment. So we had carnivores, we had herbivores. Let's see if I can get my pen to work here. I don't think so, actually. Oh, I need, I need to click it up here. There we go, carnivores. We had herbivores. Uh, we had Oh, detritivores. Sort of working. Decomposers, scavengers. And then finally, omnivores. Okay, so that is a look at all of the different consumer types. Now, See if I can get to my next slide here. Sort of. Oh, there we go. It flew all the way to the end of my slides. We'll get this to work here. Okay. <clears throat> so these consumer types actually work together to recycle matter. Um, when organisms die, they don't just sit there. Um, they maybe lose their life, but they do have um, important nutrients that are beneficial to the soil. So there are some organisms that help do that. Um, when you look at the pictures up above, we see the three different consumer types that work together to help recycle an organism that dies, whether it's plant or animal. We start with scavenger. Let's see if I can get my pen to work again. Sca Avengers. Sort of. Okay, we start with scavengers, and they're the ones that clean the organisms. These are like vultures or hyenas, um, and they'll clean most of the uh, tissue off, which makes it easier for the next group to start breaking them down. These are our decomposers. Just have to go a little slower. There we go. And decomposers chemically break down an organism into dead particle parts. And this is really where our last group shines. You can kind of see it there. It says, uh, consumes dead particles and recycle it into soil. And so it's this last group that really benefits. This is why farmers actually love to have these guys in their soil. Uh, gardeners love to have them in their soil, these worms that they actually eat the dead particles. It's called detritus. They eat the dead, um, dead particles of plant and animal. And that detritus is eaten up and pooped out as uh, something really beneficial for the soil that that uh, plants can use to grow. So that's why they're called detritivores. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Slow down. Detritivores. Okay. Well, that was weird. Okay, moving on. So uh, we're going to talk about carbon cycle uh, in class a little bit. And this diagram is just going to help us see some of the things we've already talked about um, with the carbon cycle. For instance, we know that um, plants produce a type of carbon for animals to eat. That's called carbohydrates. And uh, the picture I picked here was of a banana tree. You can pick what you want. But it should match your animal. Like, for example, I've got the monkey over here because I've got the carbohydrate of a banana. Oh, that did not turn out nice. Okay, carbohydrates. And that carbon actually goes back to the plant from the animal because as it's breaking down all of that energy inside its body it's actually going through a process called cell respiration and that cell respiration process uh, takes the food that we eat and converts it into something our cells can use and a waste product of that process no oh, it's doing it again cell respiration 
There we go. Look. Um, it uses that process called cell respiration uh, to <clears throat> produce energy for the cells and then creates a waste product that you're familiar with called carbon dioxide. That it breathes out and gives the plant. And plants are definitely going to use that carbon dioxide through the process of photosynthesis. And through photosynthesis, a plant makes carbohydrates. And the cycle starts again between them all. Okay, so that is basically what we want to complete for our notes today uh, to help us see the movement of carbon a little bit in the ecosystem uh, as well as everything else we talked about. So that means that we have just a couple slides left. Um, there's a quiz that we've, we will uh, complete and that quiz has on it um, abiotic, biotic, processes and knowing the difference between something living interacting with something living and something living interacting with something that's not living abiotic and biotic um, it also has uh, all of our terms that we used uh, we studied for consumers so heterotrophs um, con consumer types like scavenger uh, carnivores omnivores and so on um, but then also the, the different terms that we studied for plants, too. We said they are autotrophs, they're primary producers, and they use photosynthesis. So all those things are important to the completion of your quiz, uh, including this diagram right here. You need to know this diagram, too. So these are all things that you should really focus on to finish your notes and be ready for your quiz.